All right, you are looking for a budget-friendly cinema lens. Does it exist? Yeah, it does. And you've probably done a lot of research trying to find the perfect lens. Now, you can rack your brain, go crazy, just, you know, pull your hair out trying to figure out which set do you want to buy and, and why. And I think, like me, and majority of the time, you spend more time probably trying to figure out why you don't want to buy the lenses instead of why you should buy the lenses. And I think I have a set that will hopefully change your mind. I think it will. And you probably clicked on this video because of it. And it is the Suray Nightwalker T1.2. Now, first thing I want to show you, if you look at the size, the size is just, it's like to me, for the way I, I shoot or for what I shoot with right now, it just works perfectly. And you can see how the rings line up. You can see how these are exactly in the same place. And it's like that all the way across the set, which is, it's just, it, it just works. And the reason why I say that is because when I use a focus pull and I put this lens on my red Komodo, I don't have to do anything as far as worrying about where I need to adjust that focus pull when I go to another lens. Because once you take it off, you barely got to move the focus pull. You put a lens on there and you just tighten that focus pull right back up where it was. That's great. That's just less you have to worry about. Now, it might sound minor, but to me, it just... I like that. I like the idea of not having to worry about adjusting it any more than just moving it slightly just so I can add another lens to it. Now, I was just talking about the size of it. It's, it's, it is, it's smaller than the majority of lenses that you will see as a cinema lens, but it's got a nice little heft to it. And I did talk about all this, kind of an overview when I got these in a video, and I, that video will be right here. You can go check that out if you want to. Uh, these have a nice heft to it, and when I pair it with the Red Komodo, it's the weight distribution is like almost perfect because I have a matte box, I have the lens, the body, you know, a V-mount, all this stuff on it, but it, the weight distribution is just perfect. Now, this is kind of my setup. If you can see, um, you, know, you can notice I have the lens right here. You can see that, but it, it's, it's a pretty small setup. And the weight distribution to carry is just, it's, um, it's perfect. And you can see right here where I have the focus pull. I had a handle that went right here. And I had to take that handle off because the focus pull would not, would not um, engage. It was just off. So I had to uh, take the handle off, which is not a deal breaker. It's fine. But that's where... Uh, that's the only thing that went wrong with putting this lens on this camera. Now, I usually like the handle on there, but in this situation, I do have another point of contact because I'm pulling focus, and it absolutely didn't do anything to the way I was handling the camera. So um, it keeps it keeps it small. Uh, it keeps it, you know, light, but the distribution of weight is almost perfect, even when I put a V-mount right here. So as you can see, I mean, with that, with that setup, it's like, it's, it's perfect. And with the look of these lenses, they're consistent all the way across the entire set. Some lenses that you get are, they could change depending on, you may be, let's say you're at a 16 millimeter and it's got that warm feel that you like, and maybe you go up to a 50 millimeter, you could, it may be just a little bit cooler. That happens in some sets of lenses. So you have to be kind of aware of that when you're researching and look for that because if that's something that you're gonna struggle with and you don't want it, you, you wanna stay clear of that. Now, it's not a big deal because you can fix it in post, but I like to just skip that step. And if I can have consistency across a set, it just works for me. And for me, for what I've seen, these are straight consistent from the, from the 16 millimeter to the 75 millimeter. And it is, again, a 1.2, which, I mean, I know what you're saying. It's like, who wants to shoot at 1.2? Because the focal uh, plane is probably razor thin, and it's hard to get 
focus and keep it, but it's really not. And it helps a lot because in this scene that we were shooting on this project that we just shot, this short film that I shot with a friend of mine, we were in the woods and it was pitch black dark. And the only light we had was from a fire that we had built. Now we did have a couple Pavo tubes and it didn't add a lot of light. So all the light we had was from the fire. We didn't have time, we were running up against um, where we had to be out of there and we were able to go down to 1.2 and get the lighting that we need. And it looks terrific, it looks fine. Everything's in focus that we needed in focus. Now, will you wanna shoot at 1.2 all the time? Probably not. But when you need to, the great thing is, is that it's there and there was nothing wrong with the footage. I like the way these look. I think it has a nice, um, nice feel to them. I don't like it overly sharp anyway. I like kind of a soft look and I think these deliver that. Uh, my opinion from what I've seen, that's what I'm getting from it. Uh, you can look at other footage and that's what kept me coming back to these lenses when I was comparing it to all the other budget lenses that were out there. These just had a nice look and feel, but the, the price is insane. It's so low for an entire set. The link, again, is in the description below. It's not an affiliate link. I don't get anything from it. I'll just put it down there so it's easy for you to find, and, and you can go check it out, see what you think, and then, you know, make your own decision. But I think these right here will check all the boxes. It does for me. It checks the price, the size, the weight, the look, all that. It checks every box for me. And I really can't find anything wrong. Now, if you want to dive deep into it scientifically, I'm sure you can tear it apart and figure something out and figure a reason why you don't want to buy them. I'm trying to give you all the reasons why I think you should buy them. Um, they will do everything you need and they're compact. I can stick all these in a camera bag with other camera gear and it limits what I have to take. So I don't have to take another case and put these big giant lenses in there. And I guess really, if I had to find something wrong, is that if you see this um, right here, I, I don't really, I'm not a big fan of this type of cap. I like the caps that go over the top, but I mean, if I had to find something wrong, there you go. That's, if that's a deal breaker for you, you probably don't need to uh, buy these lenses. Maybe go buy you something else that's a little bit more expensive, but you have that cap, if that's what it means for you. To me, it just means what, what I care about is when I put this on my Komodo, what am I gonna get out of it? And I get everything that I want, and I get everything that I expect, and I get actually get more than I expect for this price. Um, I, think they w I think they punch way over their price range. So anyway. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please hit like and uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I will uh, see you in the next video.